Thank you, our brother Chu Yong, for reading the word of God for us. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday is the day we remember that our Savior, who was raised by God, he was raised by God, is a passive tense. On the third day after his death, the first fruit of the new age to come. And because of him, we are sure that we will follow him. Those who believe in him will also have a bodily resurrection on the day that he comes again. In order to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, let's refresh our mind, our memory on the death and crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, asking ourselves, in the first place, why must Jesus die? And therefore, how we should respond to his resurrection. Shall we come before him and pray? Father God, we want to praise you because of your mighty hand that you have raised our Lord Jesus Christ on the third day. We want to thank you and praise you because you have sent him to be incarnated as a baby and so that he will be like us and take over, substitute for us that to meet your requirement, your justification. Father, we thank you that for those that have believed in you, we have received your declaration of being righteous, not because of our work, but because of your grace and mercy. So, Father God, as we continue to study this passage on the rest on the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, may your Holy Spirit be in each one of us, interpret for us the message of the crucifixion and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we truly know why did he have to die? And so that we will be able to celebrate his resurrection. So that we will know how we should respond and manifest of the forgiveness that you have first given to us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I think all of us are pretty familiar with the context of the events that are leading to the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. But first of all, may I emphasize to you that Jesus was not a victim of the so-called scheme of the Jewish leaders. He actually has known that he has been sent to die on the cross for our sin. He has prophesied three times his death during the journey as he coming down from Galilee all the way down to Jerusalem. And he knew beforehand that he would be betrayed by his disciples, his very own disciples, Judas. And subsequently he was trialed by the high priest early in the morning. And then he was being delivered to the Roman government. Why? Because According to the Jewish who are basically under the rule of the Roman Empire, they would not be able to sentence a person for capital punishment. So they have to deliver Jesus to the Roman government and they have to so-called create a charge on him that he basically claimed to be the king of the Jews. Jesus subsequently, although Pilate after examining him, although Pilate had delivered him to Herod, King Herod, and to examine him, all of them have concluded that Jesus was indeed innocent. They could not find anything to so-called punish him with the capital punishment, death, the crucifixion. But because of the people, that they rather exchanged Barabbas for Jesus Christ, that he was delivered to be crucified. Why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus have to die? Keep this question in your mind as I expound on today's passage for you this morning. The structure of this passage, Luke chapter 23, verses 26 to 30, so called 43, can be divided into either three or four parts. I offer to you what being so-called suggested by the ESV, 
the way to the cross. Verses 26 to 31, the crucifixion itself, and then the two criminals. But I want you to leave this Resurrection Sunday with the main idea. Jesus saves because he did not save himself. Luke's Gospel is full of ironies. The ruler who alive, right, will die and eternally separated from the Creator, Father God. The condemned who was dying would live. The one who judges would be judged. And the one who are, appeared to be judged, our Lord Jesus Christ, will one day return as the eternal judge. The charge on Jesus, the King of the Jews, in fact, was the truth, is the truth until now and forever. Jesus saves because he did not save himself. Those who repent and walk the path of reversal can find life with him in paradise. In a short passage of 18 verses, the word save appears four times. Jesus was being ridiculed. He saved others. Let him save himself. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. The main theme of the entire Gospel of Luke and is being shown here. He saved because he did not save himself. If he has escaped and passed the cup as per his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the Mount of Olive, the will of Father God will not be able to be executed and then we will all not be saved. Jesus saved because he did not save himself. Why did Jesus have to die? He died so that we will live. We are sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Jesus' death satisfied the righteous demand of the Holy God on the judgment of sins. In the ancient Israel, even in the many religions up to today, men always offer sacrifices to appease their either God. But how could animals take the place of sinful man? The will of Father God is that all be saved, but only those who repent and walk the path of reversal can find life, not just in paradise, but finding life with Jesus in paradise. And for those who did not make the turning back, the repent, they will eternally be condemned. I want to cover mainly two key points. There are so much to be covered in this well-known paragraph, or we known as pericope. And today, I want to focus on Jesus' prayer for the lost, on Jesus' answer to the prayer of the lost, those who seek His forgiveness. The way to the cross, and as they led him away, they seized, they compelled one Simon of Cyrene, not Simon Peter, Simon of Cyrene. Who was he? Cyrene was basically modern day Libya. And Simon, from the name, he was one of the diaspora Jews. He came all the way from Cyrene to come all the way into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Because three times a year, all the Jewish males are supposed to go to Jerusalem to celebrate. To celebrate. And he was conscripted by the Roman soldiers to carry the cross of Jesus. Because Jesus was so weakened by the beating that he could hardly have the strength to carry the wooden crossbeam and complete the journey from the so-called the fortress into all the way outside the city to be crucified. The Romans will never crucify anyone inside the city of Jerusalem. The crucifixion is always done outside the city. 
And according to Mark's Gospel, this Simon of Cyrene was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And scholars link this particular Simon, or specifically Rufus, to the one that subsequently in Paul's Gospel, so collected to the Romans. And this Rufus himself was serving, was a co-laborer of Paul. So even though there was no record of whether Simon himself was a believer, but we know after that journey of carrying the cross, following Jesus, he has believed, and therefore his children has also believed. A lesson for us is to take up his cross daily and follow Jesus, and we will come to know and to understand him better and deeper. I don't mean carrying the decorative mini crucifix, but more so the carrying his cross daily. It means that to surrender our rights, to give up our pride to follow him. And there follow him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. The great multitude would likely have included the Jewish religious leader. They want to witness the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But Luke specifically want to point out in his unique writing that Jesus' heart was for the multitude of women who were lamenting, who were having compassion on him. This particular paragraph is unique only to the Luke's Gospel. It was not captured in the Gospel of Matthew. It was not captured in the Gospel of Mark. It is a repeat of Jesus' compassion for the city of Jerusalem. Jesus, by turning to them, to the women, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourself. Jesus wept when he first entered into Jerusalem on the Palm Sunday. About six days or five days, right before this particular event on the Good Friday. At that time, when he entered into Jerusalem, he wept for Jerusalem. And Luke and the rest of the Gospel recorded the first weeping of Jesus. And now when Luke basically repeat that, it's to emphasize not so much on Jesus weeping for himself. Jesus is pronouncing the judgment on the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus is showing the compassion specifically for the women. All will be suffering when the Roman soldiers eventually come in and destroy the city of Jerusalem, destroy the temple of God in Jerusalem. And specifically on that day, the mothers with young babies, the mothers with young children will be suffering even more than any others. Ended up another irony that the barren women, which is supposed to be a shame, right, in that culture, end up to be the blessed one. It is more the talk about Jesus is telling the women, weep for yourself. Because the city of Jerusalem have rejected God and God has punished the city of Jerusalem. The conditional clause, if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Who are the they? I'm sure by now you know that every time when we look at the pronoun, we will always want to look back what is the antecedent of this particular pronoun. Who are the they? If the Roman soldiers were the they, if they can, could do such a cruel punishment on the innocent Jesus, Pilate had declared that Jesus was innocent. If they could do such a cruel thing, what more? What more? Subsequently, when the Roman soldier deemed the rest of the, Jerusalem, the people in the Jerusalem city to be rebellious, they have rebelled against the Roman government. What would they have done, would do? If God has not spared his innocent son from such tribulation by permitting his crucifixion, how much worse 
would it be for a sinful nation of Israel when God unleashes his righteous wrath upon it by permitting the Romans to destroy Jerusalem? The crucifixion. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they come to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. The skull is the Hebrew word. The word that we are very commonly known now today is Calvary. The cross of Calvary is a Latin word representing the same place. And the same place as far as in the then language of the Aramaic that the people of the Jewish people at Jesus' time speak is known as the Gaukota. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who were the them? When Jesus prayed to Father God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Was Jesus referring to the Roman soldiers? Was Jesus referring to the Jewish leaders? Was Jesus referring to the women who were following them, mourning after him? What about Simon of Cyrene, who carried his cross? The dam, most of us would have known by now, the dam referred to all the sinners, all those who sin against God and know not what they have done. And that means including you and I. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Paul writes that all have sinned. All, you and I, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us need the forgiveness of God. And Jesus interceded for you and I to his Father God. And we are so sure, guaranteed, when Jesus prayed according to the Father's will, his prayer will be answered. A good understanding of who they are, who are the them, will help us to understand why did Jesus have to die. We receive the forgiveness from Father God because of the intercession of our Lord Jesus Christ. We receive the pardon because of not what we have done, but because of what Jesus has done, because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ who obey Father God, not just to come, be humiliated, to become a man, humble himself to become a man, but he humbled himself to death and a death on the cross. As God, sitting at the right hand of God, Jesus need not come down to die on the cross, but because of his love for us, because of his grace for us, that he obey the will of Father God to die on the cross for us. The mocking of the rulers and the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying the word that I have just repeated in the beginning of today's sermon, he saved others, let him save himself. If you are the Christ of God, save yourself. But Jesus saves by not saving himself. Jesus' earlier prayer on the Mount of Olives, he prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Jesus knew that the crucifixion is a very painful and cruel death. But he followed up by saying, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours, Father God, your will be done. Because it is the love of Father God to save all. Luke, inspired by the Holy Spirit, squeezes in three titles of Jesus in just these four verses. Christ of God, His Chosen One, and the King of the Jews. When I was young, about your age, one of my older sister, 
exactly 20 years older than me. She has the same birthday as me except 20 years earlier. But she was already a Catholic. She has the crucifix of Jesus in, his, um, in her possession. I was not a Christian then, but I have always been very curious to want to find out what were the words that is on top of the crucifix. But now I know it is this is the king of the Jews and it is in three languages. For those of you who have been living in Singapore for long, you know that majority of the official publication in Singapore will have to be in four languages. So the charge that they put on Jesus will also have to be in at least three languages. The first language, obviously, in the official language of the Roman Empire, Latin. But it will also be in Greek, the lingua franca at that time. And of course, it is not in Hebrew. It is in Aramaic. Because when the Jews return from the exile in Babylon, the spoken language is no longer the Hebrew. Only the scribe, those who are so-called the learned, the general public including our Lord Jesus Christ, speak Aramaic. So in three languages, this is the king of the Jews, was in that so-called charge on top of the cross himself. But end up, as I've already said, this charge on Jesus is true, but it's not a charge. It is in fact a true statement. Jesus is the king of the Jews and not just the king of the Jews the church he is the king of all mankind the Jewish rulers actually appeal to Pilate and say no 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 you can't put that you can't say that this is the king of the Jews you should put that governor Pilate you should put that and say he claims that he is the king of the Jews but Pilate said no what he has written he has written and so we know the Bible actually have given us, the Holy Spirit actually have intervened. Jesus, the King of the Jews, who died on the cross, not for himself, but for the sin of all mankind. One of the criminals, now we come to the two criminals, the conversation of the Jesus and the two criminals. Again, this is unique only in the Gospel of Luke not in the Gospel of Matthew, not in the Gospel of Mark. Why do I always have to stress that? I stress that because now when we look at the Gospel of Luke, when we look at why Luke is writing in this way, we will be having a better appreciation of the message that Luke, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is trying to convey to us. The first criminal, even as he was crucified, did not repent. In fact, he ridiculed Jesus say the same thing. He followed the soldiers. He was dying on the cross, but he still tells Jesus, Jesus, if you are the Christ, the fourth title that Luke wanted us to know, and we know that that is, Jesus is Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Christ means anointed one, the Messiah in Hebrew language. Save yourself and save us. But he was not believing of what he had just said. But the other criminal, the other criminal, make four important confession. He said, we are to fear God, for we are under the same sentence of condemnation. We are to fear God. Second, we indeed are receiving our due punishment. But this man, Jesus, he was innocent. Only God is known as innocent. No other man can call himself innocent because every man that is born of Adam and Eve will be sinful. But Jesus was born on the Virgin Mary. She was not born under the so-called original sin carried down by Adam. Jesus, the most important, the fourth confession of the other criminal, remember me in your kingdom. 
the other criminal know very well he probably was inspired to know that this so-called dying person is going to be the king because there will be no kingdom if this person is not going to be the king there will be no kingdom if this person will not be resurrected he doesn't fully understand but he believe he believe he believe that jesus will be resurrected will come back as a king and he's asking jesus jesus remember me he acknowledge he has sin he acknowledge that he has in fact go against even the roman the law that he receive his due punishment under the roman um, government but he now he turn to jesus and say remember me in your kingdom and jesus reply truly i say to you today you will be with me in paradise i'm sure you have heard about the seven last saying of jesus christ on the cross seven last saying right nobody know the sequence itself right it was being captured in matthew gospel mark gospel and luke gospel luke will only have three saying and over here the two saying of jesus that luke put it down to convey to us the message of jesus comes to seek and to save the laws i counted the two important key points of today's passage the first one jesus prayer the second one jesus answer to prayer this is to help us to remember the two important sentences that jesus say on the cross as recorded by luke is jesus praying to father god for us is jesus answering the prayer of the repented criminal father forgive them for they know not what they do truly i say to you today you will be with me in paradise and not just the confessed criminal will live he will live in paradise and he will live with jesus christ and for all of us that believe jesus is the messiah jesus is the christ jesus is the king of the jews we too will know what is being written for us in 1 john 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not true. The lessons for us, Jesus' prayer, Jesus' answer to prayer. Why did Jesus have to die? Why did Jesus have to die? He was despised and rejected by man. Why? but he was pierced for our iniquities. He was crushed for our iniquities. He has to die, not because of himself. He did nothing wrong. He was innocent. He has to die because of us. Because of us. He was pierced for our iniquities. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the Lord, as I capitalize it, means Yahweh, the Adonai, has laid on him a prophecy being written in Isaiah chapter 53, more than 1,000 years before the first Good Friday. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It was the will of Yahweh to crush him because of our sin, of our iniquities. But this is not the end of the story. In Luke chapter 24, verse 1, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they, the women, went to the tomb. The men say, there were two men, two angels, as according to Luke, Say to the women, why do you seek 
the living among the dead. You don't come to the tomb to look for the living. He has risen. He is not here. And the angel told the women, you shouldn't come to the tomb. The tomb is for the dead people. The dead people will not be, right? The living people will not be in the tomb. Jesus is alive. That is the reason why we celebrate the Resurrection Sunday. And he gave the angel further explain. It was already prophesied. Jesus had already told them beforehand. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, Jesus was in full control of the entire event. That the Son of Man must first be delivered into the hands of the sinful man and be crucified. But on the third day, he raised. He was raised by Father God. Knowing all this, knowing the answer, why did Jesus have to die, is not enough for us. We must have a response. We must have a response. We must make our personal response to the hate knowledge that we receive today. Why did Jesus have to die? He died because of our sin. Then what shall we do? Repent. Like the other criminal confesses his sinful deed, before the king of the Jews confesses his sin, we are too to do exactly just that. And other than confessing our sin, other than believing that he raised on the third day, we too must forgive others as Christ forgive us. One of the outward manifestations of a forgiven sinner whose sin has been forgiven is to forgive others just as Christ has first forgiven him. The forgiving here refers more so to the depth of others who are indebted to us, knowingly or unknowingly. And in the Lord's Prayer, that many of you are familiar, the Lord teaches us to pray, forgive us our debt as we forgive those who are in debt towards us. And with this, I want to close in this particular time. I want to invite you to bow your head. I want to say the sinner's prayer. And for those of you who have not asked the King of the Jews to forgive your sin, this will be the opportunity for you to do so. As we bow our head, we pray. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Saviour and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sin and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I hand back the floor to our worship leader, Hannah.